Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. At this time, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. We will be led today by Supervisor Townsend. Thank you, you may be seated. All right, item one on the agenda is the state of the county presentation uh, delivered by myself. And I thank everyone for uh, joining us here today. It's great to see a good turnout. Um, it's a, a, a pleasure to be able to deliver this state of the county address and uh, I hope all of you enjoy it. Good morning and thank you for attending today's meeting. Before I begin, I would like to thank my fellow Tulare County board members, elected officials, our CAO Jason Britt, his staff, department heads, and employees for their hard work and dedication and leadership over this past year. 2019 was a great year. Working together, we achieved a lot. Probably the biggest and most notable achievement was the opening of the new South County Detention Facility in Porterville. We also unveiled our new solar energy projects on numerous county buildings. We are transforming into a clean energy future with the implementation of large-scale solar designed to generate approximately $40 million in savings over the next 25 years and reduce our electricity spending by 70%. Continuing along the theme of clean, clean renewable energy, last year we saw private industry throughout the county develop clean energy projects. Notably was the completion of the Calgren Dairy Fuels Pipeline Cluster project with Southern California Gas Company. This renewable natural gas facility in Pixley is expected to be the largest dairy biogas operation in the country. This is the first of its kind in the state, and this facility alone will eventually capture methane produced from 75,000 cows and prevent 130,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions from entering the atmosphere each year, equivalent to more than $25,000, I'm sorry, 25,000 passenger cars on the road. Finally, last year it was the desire of this board to increase our efforts in the area of code compliance and enforcement activities throughout the county. In doing so, we increased staffing to our code compliance division within the resource management agency. The additional staffing allowed for increased efficiencies within existing operations and also increased the proactive activities, including the abatement of over 100 outstanding cases in Tulare County. In 2019, Tulare County remained fiscally sound while passing a $1.38 billion budget, the largest to date, and that remains balanced for all applicable funds as required by law. This accomplishment is due to the fiscal responsibility of this board, exceptional efforts of our county management team, the use of conservative revenue estimates, and steady economic growth. The board also adopted financial policies to ensure continuous funding of a healthy strategic reserve in anticipation of uncertainties in the future. I would like to see us be mindful of these financial policies and continue to prepare for any unforeseen challenges that have been inevitably will come our way. In this coming year, the board will remain dedicated to fiscal responsibility and living within our means, regardless of federal and state budget impacts. As chair for 2020, I plan to continue to move this county down a path towards a sustainable future while providing a strong quality of life for the people here in Tulare County. Like every county, we do have our challenges, but I believe if we are proactive in addressing those challenges, we can withstand any obstacles that may come our way. Today, I would like to cover some key issues facing our county that will ultimately challenge our ability to be sustainable. I will share some strategies and highlight how we are continuing to our efforts to decrease unnecessary costs while improving efficiencies, all the while providing effective services to our residents. I will share with you some of our ongoing efforts in addressing homelessness and what is to come to help provide homeless housing solutions in this county. 
In addition, I will touch on some work of our various county departments and what you can expect to see in 2020. In maintaining the board's focus on fiscal prudence, I commend county staff for their efforts in continually analyzing our operations and how we deliver services to our constituents. This culture of self-evaluation leads to opportunities. For example, the Tulare County Library was the first in the San Joaquin Valley to eliminate late fees. This action removes barriers in how we provide better library services, especially to our most vulnerable populations, while allowing our library staff to use their time more efficiently and not be constrained to recovering minuscule fines. Tulare County Library said goodbye to late fees last summer. I look forward to seeing the effects of the implementation during 2020. Last year, we took another step towards improving efficiencies in our operations and the effectiveness of staff time by passing the ordinance to eliminate thousands of low-value property tax bills. By authorizing the county assessor to cancel regular tax bills of $100 or less and eliminating supplemental and escape bills of $50 or less, we will be eliminating approximately 15,000 assessments for 2020. And everybody knows that Roland Hill and his office love less work. Right, Roland? Are you out there? Okay. <laughs> the county is making the concerted effort to provide tax relief to our residents while increasing our fiscal diligence by not spending more dollars collecting a tax that is beyond its actual worth. This modest decrease in income to the county will effectively be offset by the savings of $740,000 annually in staff time and resources. I too look forward to seeing how this action will pay off for us in 2020. Tulare County overall is growing. In turn, we are growing as an organization in order to meet the ever increasing demand for services in our growing population. In order to staff the increasingly operational South County Justice Center, this year we will be moving a portion of staff from the District Attorney and Public Defender's offices into the Cornerstone Building set to be completed in Porterville. This move will allow us to offer a full service operation of legal services to our South County community and is a testament of our commitment to expanding services to those areas of the county in need. Improving upon the safety of the public in Tulare County is a top priority of this board, and we will be making enhancements to our public safety operations this year with the consolidation of our emergency dispatch centers. Currently, our sheriff's dispatch and fire dispatch are housed in separate locations, and we will be bringing them together under one roof to better our communications and to improve the efficiency of public safety throughout the county. This relocation combined with recently approved technological advancements will improve the efficiency and effectiveness of our daily dispatch work. In keeping with our efforts to continually improve our county operations, the Auditor, Controller, Treasurer, Tax Collector's Office will be pursuing upgrades to our countywide banking services in an effort to improve banking operations, all the while decreasing daily costs. Additionally, we will be working towards replacing the financial and payroll software to increase the security of data, provide timely and accurate data for decision making, and improve overall efficiency. It's no secret there is a homeless crisis in California, and it's here in Tulare County too. I appreciate the work of our countywide task force on homelessness and their efforts in analyzing our systems, developing solutions, and most importantly, bringing all stakeholders, including the cities, to the table in order to coordinate our existing services and identify innovative solutions. I want to highlight what we, the County of Tulare, have been doing and are currently doing to address homelessness. On a daily basis, our county staff is working to connect our current homeless populations to existing services, providing rental assistance to families in hardship to prevent them from becoming homeless, and continually working towards establishing permanent housing solutions. We have boots on the ground and staff throughout the county working to connect our homeless populations with existing housing, health care, mental health programs, and services available to them. The newly formed homeless outreach team within our Health and Human Services Agency is serving as the primary means in doing this. 
We have also coordinated services with the St. Paul's Low Barrier Warming Shelter in, war, Warming Center in Visalia, providing outreach and services over the course of operation of the Warming Center, including public health, nursing services, public guardianship programs, and mental health crisis workers. We have provided and assigned county social workers on ride-alongs and assisted the Visalia HOPE team in making 155 contacts that ultimately led to 18 individuals being housed and off the streets. In addition, we continue to make staff available by offering our services at various homeless outreach community events, including the Kings to Larry Homeless Alliance's Pop-Up Navigation Center and Project Homeless Connects. Through the CalWORKs Housing Support Program and Homeless Assistant Program, we have provided $379,000 of housing and rental assistance to 942 families in this county. Through the Housing and Disability Advocacy Program, we have placed 13 disabled individuals experiencing homelessness into housing. In terms of youth, we have provided housing and rental assistance to 123 former foster youth with funds allocated from Assembly Bill 12. These are just a few examples of how the county is continually working to establish methods to provide available funds to those in need to prevent them from becoming homeless. Permanent housing efforts are underway and we continue to develop more programs in the area of supportive housing by securing no place like home allocation funds. Through this funding stream and in collaboration with our community partners, we have seen these housing projects remove nine individuals off of the streets in Dinuba and 14 individuals experiencing homelessness off of the streets in Porterville. In addition, the county recently opened housing facilities in both Porterville and Tulare, gearing or geared to provide over 150 beds and supportive housing for mental health consumers and or members of our homeless population. We look forward to both these operations becoming fully implemented this year. Good things are happening in Tulare County, but we are well aware that there's a lot more to do. I urge our staff to continue their efforts in collaborating with our community nonprofits, faith-based organizations, and our cities to continue effective partnerships and remain vigilant in searching for solutions to address the current homeless crisis. I look forward to the work underway at our Health and Human Services Agency and their implementation of the Whole Person Care Pilot Program in 2020. This program will redefine how we provide services to our residents by focusing on a more holistic and collaborative approach to mental health, wellness, and homelessness. The rollout of this pilot in this coming year will include the establishment of numerous multidisciplinary teams at various locations throughout the county including targeted locations within our major cities, Visalia, Porterville, and Tulare. This effort will engage county departments and community partners in providing services to those who frequent emergency rooms and individuals within our criminal justice system. The effort to combat homelessness is ongoing, and I look forward to seeing what results develop in 2020. Finally, I want to share with you all of you some of the projects and programs we expect to complete this year in Tulare County. With more than 5,000 employees working under 22 departments, we have hundreds of programs, services, and projects happening throughout the year. I will not be able to cover all, however, I do want to highlight a few. We are making expansions to our central road yard located at the corner of Avenue 256 and Road 140 as a part of our master plan. Portions of this will come to fruition with the new transit operations and maintenance facility being completed and coming online this year. This $12 million facility will also include CNG natural gas fueling stations and house our fleet of TCAT buses, transit dispatch, maintenance and administration offices. In addition, the construction of Fire Station 1 will also be completed in 2020 and will be located right next to the new transit facility. This $4.3 million project has been in the works since we established our own county fire department in 2006 as I graduated from UCLA. It's a kindergarten. Yeah, I was... 
The new fire station will provide a centralized location for improved response times to this area of the county, specifically to rural areas, and will also be integral to enhancing public safety within the expanded training facilities at this location. The timing of construction for these two additions was strategic as we were able to maximize the economies of scale and save on costs in establishing utility lines and infrastructure development for these new buildings. I commend staff and the departments for their forethought and patience in this effort. Beyond our own county facilities, the county is actively involved in building and restoring infrastructure in the rural areas of the county and within our unincorporated communities. We are actively providing and building tomorrow's infrastructure today by investing in roads, building bridges, making safety improvements, and establishing new community water systems. It's no secret we maintain a lot of roads in Tulare County, over 3,000 miles to be exact. This year, we will be investing over $24 million in the infrastructure projects on our roads. Through the Road Repair and Accountability Act, also known as Senate Bill 1, we plan on providing $11.9 million in road rehabilitation to over 30 miles of roads throughout the county. In addition, we are continuing our farm to market program, program and investing $11 million into the rehabilitation of 21.5 miles of roads essential to delivering goods from our farms to market outlets. Within our small rural communities, we will be implementing the 2020 Intersection Improvement Project, which will provide pavement improvements to the intersections in numerous communities throughout the county, including in Traver, Ivanhoe, Tipton, Tulare, Dinuba, Exeter, and Early Mart. We anticipate that these projects will be breaking ground for construction in the fall of 2020, investing a total of $1.2 million in enhancements to infrastructure. Through our ongoing bridge maintenance and improvement program, we are continuing to build bridges in Tulare County. We are responsible for and maintain 355 bridges throughout the county. This year, we will be implementing the South Fork Cahuilla River Bridge Project, constructing a $2.7 million replacement bridge. Construction for the South Fork Bridge is scheduled to begin this year with the anticipation of it being completed in 2021. In addition, we will be replacing the Avenue 364 bridge over Cottonwood Creek. This $2.8 million Cottonwood Creek bridge project will also be constructed this year with a scheduled completion by winter of 2021. Building infrastructure includes building safe communities, and that means sidewalks, curbs, crosswalks, roadway signs, and more. This is of the utmost importance to Tulare County, and it is crucial that when we plan for infrastructure improvements, we also keep safety improvements in mind. In 2020, we will be implementing community accessibility enhancement projects in the communities of Cutler, Pixley, Ivanhoe, and Tarabella. The county is investing nearly $1 million in small-scale safety improvement projects that will have huge impacts in our smaller communities. Along these lines, we will be investing $1.5 million in the community of Early Mart with sidewalk improvements along State Street and Washington Avenue in an effort to keep up with the growth occurring in that community. In addition, we will be making improvements along the Avenue 232 corridor west of Tulare, investing $1.7 million to improve safety features for travelers along the tulare Lindsay Highway. Lastly, in the area of infrastructure, we will see our continued efforts in the Yedem Seville Water System Improvement Project with the completion of the Yedem Community Water Delivery System this year. After decades of enduring water quality and quantity issues, the community of Yedem will now have a newly constructed and improved delivery system of safe, clean drinking water. Phase one of this two-phase water project is complete, which included the drilling of a new well and replacing the aged distribution system. Now we move forward on to phase two of the project and begin work on constructing a pipeline between the Yedem and Seville water systems to better provide economies of scale for both of these communities as they begin oversight, operations, and maintenance of their own water system. This is another example of how the county is making strides to improving infrastructure within our unincorporated communities. In closing, 
This board is dedicated to laying the groundwork for a viable future in Tulare County. We plan to look ahead and not only address the challenges approaching us tomorrow, but also prepare for the obstacles we expect that will come our way in the years to come. We will continue down the path the board has historically traveled upon, and we will strive to lay the foundation for our sustainable future. Thank you for your attendance at today's 2020 State of the County Address. Before we break, we will now have the opportunity to hear from each of my colleagues regarding subjects they would like to focus upon during the 2020 year. And you're not gonna have to listen to them talk, they have re recordings here. I am Dennis Townsend, Tulare County Supervisor for District 5. I've been in office now for one year, really looking forward to 2020. 2019, we've had a lot of things accomplished working collaboratively with my colleagues here on the dais. This year, I'd really like to concentrate on a couple of things, and we've already got these things uh, in place and started, but working a little bit more on forest management and uh, working with a partnership with CAL FIRE, with Tulare County FIRE, uh, with some non-governmental organizations, and with the Forest Service uh, to really take care of the mountains that we have in Tulare County. Uh, the forests back here are a real treasure uh, that we don't notice all the time, but we really need to take care of them, so we want to concentrate on that. That, and I want to take some more care of our roads as well, and so we're going to work on some structural changes to the budget to maybe put some more maintenance funds in place. Looking forward to it. Living on the margins is just too much to bear. And California policies and laws have been implementing rehabilitation rather than incarceration for our juveniles. And I'm so excited that Tulare County is on the front lines of this issue. Here today, we are at the Juvenile Detention Facility Vocational Education Center, where we are going to have students participate in all of these different educational opportunities like electrical, communications, concrete, plumbing. Why? Because we know that our youth need to be connected to the outside. Our youth need to be connected to industry so that when they leave this place, they are able to thrive and strive for a better tomorrow. I look forward to prioritizing programs like these in Tulare County in 2020. Why? because those living on the margins is just too much to bear. I'm District 3 Supervisor Amy Shucklian, and I chair the county's task force on homelessness. In early 2019, the county, along with the cities of Visalia, Porterville, and Tulare, commissioned Home-Based Strategies, a nonprofit organization to help us develop a strategic plan to combat our complicated homelessness issue. The plan was presented late 2019 and some of the opportunities and challenges that they found that we needed to find more permanent housing solutions, <coughs> connecting people to housing focused services, comprehensive supportive services and temporary housing, preventing homelessness before it starts and leadership and coordination. I look forward to carrying these strategies forward in the next year and working and collaborating with our cities and nonprofit partners to tackle our homelessness issue. Hi, Tulare County. This is Kyler Crocker, District 1 Supervisor. And in 2020, I want to focus on economic development as a major priority for this county. Last year, we completed a countywide economic development study, and this year is the year for implementation. I think there's two things that we can really focus on. One, facilitating the building of water quantity and quality projects as well as wastewater treatment facility. For our unincorporated communities, this can be a major driver to helping to build and create new jobs. The second thing is maximizing new financial incentives like opportunity zones and other creative solutions that can help bring in more finances to our county as well as making sure that we are um, helping to remove any hurdles that are for our county. Thanks and looking forward to a great 2020. All right, well, thank you very much, each of my colleagues for, ooh, for sharing your uh, outlook for uh, 2020 and what you see uh, coming in the year ahead of us. 
Um, if any of you would like to make any comments at this time, feel free to do so before we uh, break for a little bit of interaction with the audience and answering questions. Uh, my only comment is thank you very much for um, your state of the, not union, the state of the county um, address. And I look forward to working with you as vice chair in your leadership role this year and uh, getting a lot of those things accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to mention that it, those videos and, and the, the speech you gave a little bit earlier just shows that the different areas of interest that each of us have, but that we all uh, will work together uh, to make these things happen. And so uh, it's exciting to be a part of it. It's exciting to see each one um, have those things that kind of rise to the top of their importance. And, uh, but, I, but I think we all have each other's back on that. So we look forward to working together for this year. Thanks. Supervisor Valero. Yes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to and very excited about uh, 2020. Uh, I know that we have dedicated staff out there that are passionate about the work that needs to get done for our county. And under your leadership, I think we will make that happen. Great. Well, thank you very much. We are actually going to take a brief recess and we will reconvene at 940. Thank you very much. We'll bring it back to our agenda at this time and take up item two, which is Board of Supervisors matters. We will start with Supervisor Crocker. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and we're looking forward to a great 2020. Thank you. And all the good work that staff has put on, and I think we've our board has a, a lot of great vision as far as the direction we're going. Um, as far as um, information uh, that happened last week really I, I just want to highlight uh, the TCAG local motion awards I want to thank all the staff that showed up um, we had a great turnout did a little differently went to um, the uh, Edison Ag Tech uh, Center and I think it really kind of uh, spruced it up a little bit um, than, than what uh, we've normally had the Secretary um, of Transportation for the State of California uh, David Kim was there and um, had a quite a bit of opportunity to highlight some of the projects we're doing and um, I think based on some of his remarks that um, he, it really took it to heart and I'm hoping that we continue to have a long partnership on uh, many other projects and that he continues to emphasize and place uh, additional resources in our in our neighborhood and and um, he was really one of the primary drivers as far as restoring uh, 99 funds, expansion funds for uh, the city of Tulare uh, portion. So uh, we appreciated being there and I know our county, we received four awards. So congratulations to RMA staff. I know you got recognized last week, but good job. Um, and many of those projects, uh, our chair highlighted just a few minutes ago um, about some of the projects that have taken place and, and that will be taking place as far as uh, our new transit center and some of the various ATP projects and other things involved with transit. So excellent job. And then uh, Thursday, the only thing um, I want to highlight coming up is uh, we have a Yosemite Sequoia RC and D meeting. Um, and that, um, again, is a, a group of resource conservation um, uh, districts that are focus primarily on um, mountain e economy and uh, forest health issues. And so it's a regional group that um, it covers Tulare County, Fresno, Madera, and Mariposa. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Right. Supervisor Shucklin. Thank you. All right. Um, as you mentioned in your uh, state of the county, I attended the ribbon cutting for the new uh, housing project in uh, Tulare, the 20-bed um, apartment. I also attended on the 16th the annual BIA Building Industry Association dinner installation of officers. Uh, got to see a, an old friend Ray Appleton there. On the 23rd uh, I attended the homeless Project Homeless Connect that was held at St. Paul's Church this year. Uh, smaller than in previous years because of what the county is, is doing on a 
continual basis, the things that they used to do at the Project Homeless Connect, but a lot of our county folks were there, HHSA, uh, offering some good services, and actually there's a, a video about the Homeless Connect. I, too, attended the local motion awards where um, I just want to highlight a couple of the awards. We did get uh, in, an innovation and sustainability in, in transportation for our ride, tcat.org, which is you can go online and it's an automated um, system trip planner. Uh, right after that that was announced as a winner, one of our TCAT buses was stolen. Um, in downtown Visalia, so it must work really well. Somebody knew exactly uh, where the bus was. We also received an award for uh, bike and pedestrian paths, uh, social services transportation was our loop bus, and also our transit maintenance facility received an outstanding transit project award. Uh, some other uh, things that I've attended last Friday, I spoke to the Breakfast Lions group. Uh, I walked out of my house at 6.30, and it's dark at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I, couldn't, I didn't know if I was coming or going. Sunday, I attended the annual meeting of the Tulare County Historical Society, where they installed their new officers with their new president, Stan Simpson, and there was a, a great uh, presentation by Lee Torkelson, who was doing some documentaries on the Sequoias, and there was also a gentleman there who, who every summer, he uh, recreates the ride of the Buffalo Soldiers uh, through the Sequoias, and that was very interesting, so uh, in August, they'll be doing that again. Uh, yesterday, we had our KT AAA meeting, Kings Tulare Area Agency on Aging, and CSET gave their presentation. They will again be doing taxes for seniors starting in uh, February. And also, we got a report that over 600 stockings were giving out, given out to seniors uh, during the Christmas season this year, so that was great. Um, this week, I'll be attending or speaking at Mount Whitney High School to uh, a group of their civics classes, the pro-youth breakfast on uh, Friday morning. And then Sunday is Groundhog Day, so I guess we'll just be doing it all over again. That's it. All right, Supervisor Valero. Good morning, Tulare County. Um, I attended the multi-agency gang intervention task force meeting uh, this week where we learned about ways in which Visalia Unified and County are working to reduce gang activity in our schools and in the community. I also shared what we're doing as a county through our step-up program. Again, it is great to see collaborative efforts in this area in order to solve some of our most pressing issues. And thanks to the sheriff and his team for Operation Stray Bullet who are working hard to keep our streets safe from harm. I also had the opportunity to meet with Maria Herrera and Chang Tua Mambangsu, uh, is the Deputy Regional Director of External Affairs and the Assistant Director, respectively, for Gav uh, Governor Newsom. They discussed their priorities for the Central Valley and what potential projects and partnerships might look like for our region. Uh, we discussed water infrastructure, along with challenges to and support for a regional water project for small unincorporated communities. Uh, last week, I also attended the Ag uh, Agricultural Committee, and our fearless leader, Mike Washam, was there as well. And it was, uh, it was a great meeting going over the key item, which is the hemp ordinance. Um, and so just uh, to share, uh, should this pass on the board, the hemp ordinance uh, will provide, or what we worked through would uh, provide zoning and regulatory framework for hemp cultivation and processing within Tulare County. The goal of the ordinance is to encourage the growth of new agricultural activity within Tulare County while protecting landowners and farmers from changing statutory structures at the federal and state level. So working through those uh, challenges is something that we had to go through at uh, last week's meeting. Uh, in addition to that, it was awesome to meet up with about 10 students from Traver Elementary, in which the group focused on a Traver library for their step-up project. Uh, the students presented to me and to the county library staff. I know that they probably took off already, but I just want to really thank Darla and her staff for being there and, and offering suggestions and recommendations and, and really making steps to making that happen. The teacher sent me an email the following day saying that the students learned so much 
from our support and questioning on how to make the project materialize. Uh, and then also attended the TCAG Local Motion Awards event, and it was a great success. Congrats to all the awardees. Uh, yesterday was a busy day as I attended the Tulare County Equity Conference with over 300 participants, along with KTAAA and our TCAG board meeting. Uh, another uh, interesting thing with the TK, uh, TKAAA meeting yesterday, um, I really enjoy the potential for upgrading our senior centers across the county while at the same time still being s fiscally solvent. Um, so just wanted to share that, that that's something that I really hope can, can move forward. Um, in addition to that, tonight I will be attending the Ivanhoe Town Council meeting along with Cutler Rossi Surface Water Treatment Project meeting. Uh, on Friday, I will be attending the Pro Youth Partnership Breakfast as well, and along with the Dinuba Chamber Annual Awards Banquet later on that evening. And then on Monday, I will be getting a tour of Family Services of Tulare County by the Executive Director, and then attending the Hashtag Lead meeting that afternoon. And that is all I have. You, you plan to sleep? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, some highlights from uh, last week. Uh, we got together, had our space uh, planning ad hoc meeting here at the county, and just discussed uh, some upcoming uh, energy updates, uh, some options for that on county facilities, uh, and also just the long-term uh, growth needs of the county and moving things around and uh, what's, uh, what's coming up over the next several years. And there's quite a bit uh, coming up to uh, consider, so that was really a good meeting. Uh, January 16th, I had a, uh, attended Rotary and uh, gave a little update on the county, a lot of the things that we touched on uh, today, and uh, just got to visit with the, the Porterville Breakfast Rotary Club. And also that same morning, I uh, had a tour of the Cornerstone facility in Porterville, uh, where the public, the public defender was taking a tour that day, and uh, Dennis Lehman invited me along. So thank you uh, to Dennis for that. That was a great uh, tour of the, uh, the project status, and it's looking really good. Excited to see that uh, come online. It gets a lot of, uh, lot of attention in, in Porterville, a lot of people asking what's going on on the corner of uh, Olive and Main at, the, at Cornerstone. So... I was happy to take a look at it. And then also the same day, uh, a meeting with, uh, with our CAO and with RMA and with Ted from TCAG, just talking uh, a little bit more about getting a little more in depth about uh, road maintenance and how that's funded uh, in the county. I'm still learning uh, about all those things and then how we might do even a better job. Uh, right now we really take those road funds and stretch them out and get real creative on how we can use them. And uh, just looking at any other way to get more funding push that direction to save that over 3,000 miles of roads that our chairman was talking about uh, this morning. Uh, January 17th, we had our East Thule Groundwater Sustainability Agency meeting in Porterville, and we did approve our groundwater sustainability plan uh, that will be going in uh, this month, and uh, also our sub-basin coordination agreement, um, which was uh, probably the more difficult of the two uh, to get together, but to get everybody on the same page, but we're able to do that. And uh, so moving forward along with the other GSAs. And then on the 22nd, we had our uh, LAFCO meeting here, and we did approve uh, LSID's uh, request for annexation and detachment and uh, sphere of influence uh, changes, uh, also dealing with some things uh, coming up with, with Sigma uh, and the way that water is delivered. Uh, and so uh, that was a really interesting discussion on how things are moving and changing uh, within uh, the county. Uh, to, uh, to address these issues, but we were able to get that, uh, get that approved so that they could move forward with that. And then it's been mentioned by several, but the Local Motion Awards was a, a great time over at the Edison Ag Tech, and again, congratulations to every, everyone in the county that worked so hard on all of those projects. On the, uh, on the 24th, uh, I stopped by the uh, Grand Avenue United Methodist Church for the prog uh, Project Homeless Connect, uh, were, uh, uh, there were all the volunteers out there providing services, everything from, uh, there were people out there, friends of mine that, that I know volunteering to, to uh, fix bicycles, uh, some of them in pretty rough shape, and they were out there with all of their parts and pieces and putting those together to make them operable. Uh, there were food distributions going on, there were services for veterans happening, uh, you get medical, dental attention, there was even veterinary stand for, uh, uh, for uh, 
people with their, with their animals could bring them there. And then uh, also booths, uh, a lot of county uh, staff were there uh, and providing uh, job opportunities and pointing people in the right direction. So a lot of positive things uh, happening over in Porterville during the project Homeless Connect. And on the 27th yesterday, of course, we had our uh, TCAG, Tulare County Association of Governments meeting. And this week, uh, coming up on Wednesday, um, we have a Man Alive board meeting. Uh, I'm a, a part of that for this is the 11th year of Man Alive. It's an interdenominational uh, uh, men's ministry. We have really proud this year. We have Chuck Stecker uh, coming in, and he is a 23 year uh, Army veteran. And three of those years, uh, he served uh, on the joint staff at the Pentagon. Uh, so it's going to be really great to hear from him on March 14th over in Porterville at the Porterville Nazarene Church. Um, Thursday, uh, the 30th, uh, I'll be doing a, a county update at the Government Affairs uh, Committee meeting uh, over at the Porterville Chamber of Commerce. We meet over there uh, monthly. And after that, uh, uh, we're going to be having a, a call in for a podcast with, uh, with Kent Hopper for his Hopper in the Morning uh, podcast. And again, talk about things that are going on uh, in the county and coming up in 2020. And then on Saturday, I'll be giving a, uh, a little welcome to, to uh, an Awana group. Uh, in Porterville, offer a prayer and a welcome at that breakfast. I'm sure I'll eat my share of pancakes as well. And then Sunday after church, I might be watching a football game. And that's about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, supervisors. A um, couple items I wanted to cover. Um, much of uh, my information has already been covered by uh, my colleagues, but I do want to highlight a few things. Um, specifically related to the retirement board, uh, to SARA funding. I didn't know that everybody's uh, uh, always anxiously awaiting those results. Uh, from the six-month period ending uh, 1231 of 19, the retirement fund posted returns of 5.1%, and don't think that's below our bogey. Um, the assumed rate of return is seven and a quarter. What that 5.1% really results in uh, is a uh, halfway mark, and so assuming all results stay the same, we are looking at a 10.2% uh, rate of return for the 12-month period ending. And if that does happen and come to fruition, that will be very welcome to our fund and to this county. Um, yesterday at the KTAAA meeting, uh, CSET did present uh, about their uh, various services and programs. One thing I want to highlight, because uh, I think that uh, uh, any person in this county that can take advantage of this should. Uh, I know this time of year is not looked forward to uh, by many people because it is the time of year for income taxes. But uh, uh, CSET offers a program uh, that I'm sure many residents take advantage of, and that's the VITA program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Um, they have uh, events throughout the county um, located at places ranging from Farmersville Senior Center to Goshen to Porterville to Lindsay to Woodlake, Early Mart. Um, they have a schedule um, where, they where they will be there. Um, and uh, their typical times run from 9 to 12. Uh, you can call in and get an appointment. And this uh, no tax no cost tax preparation by certified tax preparers is available for families with an income of less than $54,000. So uh, please do spread the word about it. These flyers are going to be circulating throughout the county. Um, this week I will be meeting with uh, Grandma's House uh, founder, uh, Ms. Flora Johnson, uh, along with our superintendent of schools for Tulare County, Tim Heyer. Uh, she's really looking at expanding her program and offering new and additional services to not only Tulare residents, she gets students from Visalia uh, and the unincorporated areas surrounding. So I really hope that uh, we're able to collectively pool uh, some opportunities together to help her achieve her goals. Um, on Monday, uh, we will be having a Chamber of Commerce, Tulare Chamber of Commerce Governmental Affairs Committee meeting at noon at Apple Annie's in Tulare. That is different than the normal date uh, because of the farm show. Uh, so I ask everyone to take note of that, and that will start at noon. Um, and then lastly, uh, the San Joaquin Valley Insurance Authority is uh, going to a major trial next week, and I'm going to be very involved with that trial. So. Um, that is in the federal court in Fresno, and if I am unavailable or not here, it's because of that. So uh, 
I drew the short straw on behalf of this board and uh, get to uh, carry that torch forward. So uh, that is all I have for uh, Board of Supervisors matters. And uh, we will now move on to uh, Section 3. Are you looking for another bite at the apple? Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me get my microphone. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, this Wednesday at 5 o'clock at the downtown uh, Visit Visalia Center on Main Street uh, will be a fireside chat with uh, Superintendent Woody Smeck from Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. So I just wanted to uh, mention that to folks since that is such a, a big part of our county. That's it. You bringing the marshmallows? Sure. Okay. Bring the chocolate. All right. Next, we're moving on to uh, item three on the agenda, which is public comments. At this time, members of the public may comment to the Board of Supervisors regarding any item that was within our jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. Public comment can and will be limited to three minutes. Is there anyone here wishing to speak under the public comment period? Okay, seeing no comments, we will now take up the consent calendar, items uh, four through 28. I know that um, we have, uh, I do wanna make comment uh, related to uh, item 16. Um, so I will uh, just make a quick comment on that. Any uh, items to be pulled or corrected from uh, members of the board or members of the public? Item 28. Item 28, uh, would you like that pulled or? Um, just a comment. Just a comment, okay. Um, so uh, anything to be pulled from members of the public or the board? Okay. Uh, Move to approve. Okay, we, we have a motion uh, to approve. Second. We have a second uh, by Supervisor Townsend. Um, before we take vote, uh, I'd like to make, uh, have uh, Supervisor Shockley make comments on item 28 and then I will make comments on 16. Uh, you know, I just want to reiterate again, you talked in your state of the county about um, all that the county is doing uh, for the homeless issue, and this is just another good example of working with the city of Tulare uh, and the WIB and providing these, these funds to get some people out of homelessness and, and into good jobs. I know Visalia did the same thing with their uh, eco program. They're continuing that, and, and people have moved into uh, permanent jobs because of this. So I just wanted to highlight that. And a very, uh, very welcome to service. Appreciate Wib coming to the table to uh, collaborate with the city of Tulare. This shows that there's uh, an effort outside of just Visalia to uh, address the uh, uh, issue that faces our whole county in homelessness. Um, I wanted to make a comment just on item 16. I wanted to thank county council um, and her staff and all of the various county departments that provide uh, volunteers and services to this program. Uh, this is uh, a Government 101 uh, program that provides training for special district board members for all of the special districts uh, throughout the county that uh, all serve the same constituencies that we represent, uh, but often many of these special districts don't have the funding within their budgets to pay for training for their elected board members. Our county council stepped up to meet the need and uh, continues to provide this service. It's a very well attended event, and I'm sure that uh, uh, this session, which will be held on February 27th, will also be uh, very well attended. So uh, thank you uh, for making that possible for our residents. Now we will be voting on this. Uh, we have a motion from Supervisor Crocker, a second by Supervisor Townsend. Please vote. Right, it's not cleared. There we go, that was from last. Motion passes five to zero unanimously. Thank you very much for your patience. We will now move on to our untimed portion of our meeting agenda. Take up item 29, which is a request from the General Services Agency to approve an amendment to agreement number 27808 with the DLR group to increase the contract amount by $172,300 from 2.69 million. Okay, you're welcome to get up, Daniel. I'm gonna keep reading until you're ready. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Richardson, your General Services Agency Director. Uh, are you nervous for your first presentation hey, or are you okay? We, we got this, Chairman. All right, good. Members of the board, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, today I just want to give you a brief introduction to uh, kind of review. It's been a while since you've heard of this, this project and, and just kind of give you an update on where we are and why are we before you today. So in 2013, uh, the county submitted this application to the state to construct a new jail at the Sequoia Field site. So the state did award us $40 million um, under SB 1022 with a county match of 10%. Uh, so what we are doing is we're constructing this new jail facility on approximately 9.9 .9 acres. The jail is uh, 52,500 square feet. 
This is a 256 bed facility, tiered housing, variety of services, programming space, classrooms, uh, yard, in, in person visiting, public waiting areas, and, and, other, and other services. Uh, this project will include demolition of the existing buildings and the infrastructure that is on the project site currently. Uh, the sewer and the water served, is going to be served by the county wastewater treatment plant and the existing wells. Uh, the total estimated project cost is $44.4 million. Uh, so what's the, the current status? So during the architectural uh, phase, the cost of construction escalated. And uh, this required additional architectural services to design engineer to find some cost savings into the architectural plans. And uh, if all goes as, as planned and um, we move forward with this, we will receive final approval from the state and go out to bid for construction in April of this year with uh, uh, bringing that back to the board to award the bid in May of 2020 with anticipated notice to proceed to start construction this summer and a final completion date if we move forward along this process uh, to anticipated to take 21 months to construct so it would be available to open in May of 2022. Um, I, I do know that Sheriff Mike Boudreau is here and, and uh, if he wants to say a few words about the, the facility and, and its needs, so sure. Sheriff. Mr. Chairman, our CIO to our County Council, good morning. It's awfully loud this morning. Are you the microphone? Yeah? Okay. Seems louder than normal. Uh, it, it, touching on Supervisor Valero's comments about rehabilitation for the juvenile detention facilities and our youth in Tulare County, the Sheriff's Office provides over 24 different programs uh, as to rehabilitation within our correctional environment in the adult facilities. This 1022 project is specifically designed for rehabilitation. Uh, this 1022 project is uh, specific to the legislation in Sacramento as to focusing rehabilitation versus incarceration, as you had said before. I've been in law enforcement for 33 years and never have I seen such a focus on rehabilitation. Incarceration was the main focus. I am thankful to the board for the uh, vision to the future with all of our infrastructure in the county. We've been very uh, happy with the sheriff's office and, and all of the antiquated uh, buildings that we have. There's been a specific focus on throwing us into the future with new infrastructure and we're thankful. This particular project, we have World War I and II barracks out there that we used to put up a lot of drywall and paint trying to make uh, facilities work. Um, with this new building, this really throws us into the future recognizing the needs of the state, recognizing the needs of our adults. Some people definitely need to be incarcerated and that's where they need to stay. However, there's others that really will benefit reducing our recidivism rates if we can focus on that rehabilitation. So we're thankful for the project, we're thankful that we're moving forward, but the focus again is rehabilitation with a transitional housing setting. Yeah. That's great, thanks for that update, Sheriff. Sure. Uh, any questions or comments from board members? Okay, sure, appreciate that detail, both uh, Daniel and uh, the sheriff. Um, if there's no uh, uh, questions or comments, uh, the chair will entertain a motion at this time. We have a motion by Supervisor Shuckley and a second by Supervisor Townsend. Please vote. <coughs> motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We will move on to item 30, which is a request from the probation department to approve a memorandum of understanding between the county of Tulare through the probation department in the Superior Court of California for the pretrial pilot program. And thank you, Chief, for coming to the microphone so quickly so I didn't have to continue reading. That's a long paragraph. <laughs> no problem. Um, good morning, Chairman Board, CAO and Council. Michelle Bonwell, Chief Probation Officer here with Stephanie Cameron, Court Executive Officer, to jointly present and just provide some historical information on pretrial services here in Tulare County. The policies governing California's pretrial system are undergoing substantial change amid recent correctional reforms and ongoing challenges to the state bail system. Pretrial risk assessment has emerged, as, has emerged as a way to help counties make decisions about whether arrested individuals should remain in the community or be detained until um, charges are until the charges are resolved. The public safety assessment is a research-based assessment that provides judges with information to make more informed decisions. 
Pretrial risk assessment tools are designed to inform, not replace, the exercise of, exercise of judicial discretion making and making decisions. Studies have shown that with effective pretrial practices, jurisdictions where pretrial release rates have increased, new criminal arrests and missed court appearance have not increased. Adopting a research-based pretrial assessment tool such as the PSA represents an important step in building a more effective, fair, and efficient pretrial system. The implementation process involved justice partners and the process from in, in, implementation through deployment took approximately four months to allow conversation and input from all parties. The PSA implementation process is a thorough seven-step process beginning at a county's readiness to implement the tool through an ongoing fidelity and long-term evaluation. This occurred last year and we're currently in the fidelity phase of the process. In 2013, the PSA was developed by the Arnold Foundation as a tool to provide judicial officers with information to help them assess a person's likelihood of returning to court for future hearings and remaining crime-free while on pretrial release. In 2018, the department was approved by Arnold Ventures to utilize the tool in Tulare County. The technical assistance included on-site facilitation of meetings with justice and community partners, on-site training of staff and stakeholders, quality assurance, case review, and continued technical support. The department has also contracted with an outside consultant to locally validate the tool here in Tulare County. Good morning. Um, so the pretrial decision points, um, the judicial decisions um, are similar to law enforcement and the prosecutor decisions in that they, in each phase, um, they, they make a decision to either um, detain or release um, individuals. And um, the judicial decisions uh, with the PSA, as Michelle um, stated earlier, that um, this is a tool that helps make the decision or, or, or gives additional information to the judicial officer to make the decision to either detain, to release um, on supervision with certain conditions through the probation department, or to release on their own recognizance. The tool itself does not release the individual. It just provides information regarding the likelihood of the individual showing up to court and making their court appearances. Um, and um, committing a new crime prior to um, the disposition of the charges. In 2016, the pretrial program was initiated in collaboration with the, court, with the court, which provided supervision to clients during the pretrial phase of the court process. In 2018, the collaborative working group was established, consisting of our local justice partners, many of whom you've heard from today. In July 2018, the public safety assessment was implemented in Tulare County. From July 2018 to August 2019, 5,260 PSAs were completed and filed with the court on all felony matters filed by the district attorney. From July 2018 to August 2019, 881 people received pretrial monitoring services. And so uh, around the end of May of last year, um, as part of Governor Newsom's budget, there was $75 million carved out for a pretrial pilot program um, to be um, monitored by the Judicial Council of the State of California. And so there was a very um, brief and brisk um, application process for um, all courts who are interested. Um, for Tulare County, we already have the PSA in place. There's many courts um, that did apply for the grant that had nothing in place. So there were no pretrial um, services whatsoever in their county. Um, and so we had about four or five weeks to apply for the grant. It was very quick in trying to get um, all of our resources together. And um, in the end, in August, we were awarded a portion of the grant. So for Tulare County, we got $3.7 million of the $75 million that um, was allocated for fiscal year budget 19-20. Uh, um, as part of our application pro uh, process, um, we detailed out what we would do here in Tulare County if awarded the grant. Um, and some of the objectives of the grants are, one is that um, it is to follow um, existing law. So um, bail is still in place. Um, the current release processes locally um, for each jurisdiction is still in place. Um, 
And what, the, what it's going to allow us to do is to um, review, or the probation department to review all individuals who are, um, who are booked into custody. Um, last year, we, uh, Michelle and probation, were, they were able to, with the resources they have, to, um, to apply the risk assessment tool to all those uh, charged with felony matters. Through this grant, this will allow us to expand to every um, individual that is booked. They will, be, uh, they will go through the risk assessment tool and the program. The goal is within 24 hours of arrest. Um, the information will be then given to um, our, a magistrate who is our court commissioner, Commissioner Tripp, um, and he will review um, the PSA um, results and make a decision at that point prior to arraignment whether to um, leave the individual in custody and detained to release with some type of supervision through the probation department or to be released on their own recognizance. Um, again, the PSA is just um, a form of information that they use or that the commissioner or a magistrate will use in making that determination um, at that point prior to arraignment. Um, as part of the grant, our goal is, like I said, to have the assessment done within 24 hours. Um, and one of the objectives is that it has to be done prior to arraignment. So we will have, um, eventually, once everything is up and running, we will have um, a magistrate who's available seven days a week to review the information and make the appropriate determinations, as well as probation staff to, um, to implement the risk assessment tool. Um, one of the other big, um, I guess it was very attractive to us here in Tulare County through this program and through the award amount that we have is that we can expand our technology that we currently have and, and put into place a more efficient process to exchange information between um, justice partners, between the court and the sheriff's department, between the court and the probation department, um, the DA and the public defender as well. Um, right now, a lot of our um, processes are manual. We still hand paper out. And so um, in addition to increasing staff and being able to um, assess all individuals in custody, we're hoping to expand our electronic, electronic processes so we're more efficient and we work much more efficiently as, um, as a group. And just some preliminary data since the pilot began in August, um, on August 9th of 2019. 2,753 assessments have been completed and filed with the court on all felony matters, and 273 people have received pretrial monitoring services. It averages about 300 clients per month. That would, There's some that go in and some that go out, but that's been our average consi consistently since the beginning. And to report, um, like I mentioned, if an effective and um, collaborative pretrial system is working well in a jurisdiction, um, as our preliminary data has showed for the most recent quarter, we're at an appearance rate of 88.9%. So although we're releasing clients from jail, it's the low level clients, it's those that the assessment tool and with judicial discretion have determined um, are not presenting risk to the community. They are coming back to, the, to court at a higher rate than they were prior to implementation of the tool. And some of our next steps, as um, the CAO mentioned, is to assess all persons booked into jail within 24 hours and provide those assessment results to the magistrate within 24 hours of arrest or well before the arraignment court date. And then our last and final step would be to validate the PSA locally. And the pretrial goals um, across the nation are really just to maximize public safety and law-abiding behavior, to maximize court appearances, and to maximize pretrial release and minimize pretrial detention. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, well, we do have a question from Supervisor Townsend, or was that from a previous agenda? No, that was me. <laughs> okay, all right, go for it. Yeah, thank you for the presentation, um, Chief. What's that? What sort of information is it that pops up on the on the PSA when when you get those reports? What are kind of some of the things that it's telling you? It's demographic information, a prior record of the client, a brief summary of the offense, and then the assessment tool results itself. And so what that takes into account is how many felony offenses they've had in the past, how many violent offenses they have, their failure to appear rate. Yeah, okay, that's, that's what I was wondering. It showed failure to, failure to appears and, yes. and uh, sort of the risk of, of uh, leaving, <laughs> not showing up, so all that's what's popping up. And then that's just like um, the CEO mentioned, that's just one component of information that is shared. 
the magistrate on the bench has um, questions that they all that he will also ask as far as kind of connection to the community. Do they have a job? Are they involved in anything? For those that actually are um, decisions are made at arraignment. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I know I have a couple questions. Um, so this is a pilot program. Um, what uh, is this funding set for a multi-year period, or is it just for uh, one year? We did not ask for any new positions in our budget. Okay. So although we, we like um, CEO mentioned, we had had a pilot going in with just the mis the felony population. I'm sorry. This will allow us to expand to the misdemeanor population. So all those that are booked that are eligible for bail or release, or and remain in custody. Um, but we hadn't asked for any additional positions to fund this, so our intent is to keep it going. Okay, great. So, and, and that's one thing that I just want to make sure, you know, these, the, the budget is rosy currently, um, and, and money is being uh, doled out to counties uh, up and down the state, and that's a lot of money for uh, counties. And uh, when that comes in, typically we go out and we hire people and get, uh, you know, ramped up to handle uh, this new tool and this new pilot. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have plans for what is going to happen once the grant expires. So uh, I'm glad that we are not uh, going out and hiring specifically for this because this funding may not be there. But I do think this is a great tool. Um, I like the fact that you are applying it technology uh, to technology so that we can um, increase our efficiencies uh, and hopefully be able to do more work in uh, screen more people uh, with the same resources that have been allocated. I think it's just a great, uh, a great opportunity, and look forward to uh, seeing the result. And so far, it's been uh, uh, quite successful. It looks like so. Thank you for the presentation, and uh, thank you, Stephanie, for being here. It's great to see you in uh, this side of county land. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chairwoman Entertainer. Is there any public comment uh, on this item? Okay. Move yeah. to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion from Supervisor Crocker, a second by Supervisor Valero. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Appreciate the presentation. Next, we're going to move on to item 31. On this item, board members may make a referral to staff to have a matter of business be considered for a future agenda. Are there any such requests from board members? Okay, seeing none, I will look over to my left and ask council if we have need for closed session. Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. Item B is off calendar. The remainder of the items A through F will be heard in closed session. I do not expect any announcements out. Okay. Thank you for attending today's meeting, and have a great weekend. And I, wait, let's see. Am I going to say go Chiefs because Shuckley is rooting for the Niners? All right. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for attending.